everybody, Paul Richards here from the Stream Geeks. Welcome back. We're in the midst of our eSports and Education online course following along with our book. And we are on chapter five, which is going to talk about the history of eSports. Let's get into it. All right, so follow me over to my whiteboard here, and I want to show you guys where we are at inside this course. All right, so we just finished the history of video games, a brief history. Now we're going to go over the history of esports, and I forgot to add something important, which is our, our video after this, which would be the history of video game studies. So looking at how video games have been studied from an academic perspective, which is actually chapter th four in this um, book. Let me see here. Actually, yeah, chapter four. So we'll go over that next. But in this video, we're looking at the history of esports. So let's do it. All right. So I've got a little, little history here that we're going to look at to show the history of esports. And it actually all started in 1972, if you can believe that. In 1972, Stanford Artificial Intelligence Lab in La Los Altos, California, hosted the first ever competitive video gaming event. And what used to be a teenage obsession reserved for adolescents who had a hard time making friends, or at least in their parents' view, has now morphed into an international phenomenon. And esports today has the potential to disrupt and irreversibly alter the way we create and consume competitive sports. Obviously, esports is a multi-billion dollar industry today, and it's growing at a pace never seen before in the history of all sports. There are milestones that have taken sports like baseball, basketball, and football the better part of the last century to achieve, and they're going to be eclipsed by esports before the first quarter of this century is over, meaning 2025. Now, as you can see here, uh, in 1972, we had this Intergalactic Space War Olympics, and it was hosted, and the winner of this event, by the way, won a subscription to the Rolling Stone magazine. So that's what you won. Now, you can imagine, you know, students are winning more money than Tiger Woods and, you know, uh, the Wimbledon tennis matches uh, with Fortnite. You know, you, in 1972, you won a Rolling Stone magazine, so that's great. Now, the first large-scale video game tournament happened in 1980, and this was held by Atari, and uh, it really made, marked the entrance of competitive gaming in mainstream. There were 10,000 participants in New York. Now, in 1982, actually, a video, game, a, show, a video game show came out called Starcade. And it was an esports program that made its debut on television, had 133 episodes from 1982 to 1984. So early 80s, you know, things are happening. Um, in 1988, we started to get some online games. And online gaming started with team-based game NetTrack. So it started to happen. These things take time. Developers were starting to see what online worlds they could build. In 1990, Nintendo held their world championship after touring the United States with a final finale at the Universal Studios in Hollywood, California. Um, NetTrack starts to gain um, some steam here. So in 1993, it hit record numbers of 5,000 players. That was a lot because it took a lot to get online at that day. You had to have a dial-up modem. You know, there was no, um, you know, high-speed internet at that time. So it was it was pretty cool to have 5,000 players playing at once. In 1994, Nintendo had its second world championship. So things are taking some time. Four years later, it was called the Power Fest. And Super Nintendo SNES was held in San Diego, California. Now, the following events, again, are highly comprised. You know, there's, there's obviously other things happening here. But in 1997, there was the Red Alliance uh, Annihilation Tournament, which was the first global esports tournament. And the grand prize was a Ferrari. So here we are. Somebody's winning a Ferrari from the lead developer of the game. Things are starting to heat up a little bit. In 1997, the Cyber Athlete Professional League is born. And they actually had a $15,000 prize for the winner there. In 2005, uh, we're going up here a little bit, the CPL tournament, that Cyber League professional tournament, is a year-long international competition spanning nine countries, four continents, and had a total prize of a million dollars. Things are really starting to grow into the 2000 decade here. Uh, 2005, creation of YouTube, 
just to kind of put that milestone on the map here. 2011, six years later, obviously a lot happened in between here, but Twitch enters the dedicated video streaming industry, uh, acquired by Amazon for 45. And it, at that point had 45 million viewers and it was the fourth peak internet traffic uh, in the United States after Netflix, Apple, and Google. So between 2012 and 2016, the video game industry starts to get recognized as the fastest growing entertainment industry in the world. And this really started to, you know, get the, get the kind of raise the eyebrows of Wall Street, investors, and people started to take video gaming a lot more seriously. In uh, 2014, now remember, this is pre-Fortnite here, 45,000 people are an attendee in um, Seoul. This is South Korea for the League of Legends final, over 27 million people watching online. Uh, Korea has always been really a leader in esports, and they, they actually lead even the United States, um, although the United States and China are really the fastest growing markets at this point. And then here we are in 2016, TBS, ESPN, starting to invest in esports leagues and broadcasting those competitions. Um, Blizzard creates the Overwatch League, which is really kind of the gold standard now. Um, and it's initially had 12 teams, has 20 currently, and it was it's really the first franchised league, okay, with commissioners and a whole kind of following the professional sports model. In 2017 here, uh, we have the League of Legends World Finals being viewed by 60 million people. Um, the rise of esports in 2018, revenue hits uh, 905 million, expected to receive, uh, exceed a billion dollars in two years. This is just for esports. And 50% of the growth coming from China and the United States. Um, key here, I think this is really important, NBA 2K League is created in 2018. So the NBA really leading the professional sports area of the industry and creating a league that is really a virtual video gaming league based on the professionals that play in National Basketball Association. So really cool that that's happening. You know, NFL is looking at it. MLB is looking at it. FIFA actually uh, created a, an E-World Cup league that they have. So it's happening. NBA 2K and Interactive, Take-Two Interactive, really leading that approach there. Um, gamers all across the world starting to, you know, to jump on board here. The highest uh, earning esports player is Kuro Takamoshi, who earned four million dollars in uh, four million in 2019. So really cool. He's kicking butt here. And then uh, just a little future-looking stuff in 2022. Esports billed as a medal event in the Asian Games, and the International Olympic Committee is considering adding esports in 2024. So just some forward-looking stuff there. So online gaming, you know, before all of this in esports, you know, uh, a lot of the video gaming that we talked about in the last video was offline. Now, online gaming, on the other hand, permits video gamers to kind of break out of that space. And so what is an esports system? So it's a game usually capable of being played over the internet or a connected system of multiple computers. It's a multiplayer game that takes some type of skill to master, right? Hand-eye coordination, stuff like that we'll talk about. Usually there's a game server that hosts the game and manages those simultaneous connections. And at this point, you really do need some type of high-speed internet connection to, to, play, to play in this esports arena. Now, what is driving this esports phenomenon? Now, one is competition. That's really at the heart and of, is the passion for the game, the passion to win, the passion to push players forward to work on the essential skills to winning. This passion is the best um, when, you know, it's, got large audiences of fans and spectators. So here's the spectators here. That really is driving this esports phenomenon. People who want to watch their favorite players compete just like baseball and football. That really drives the industry. And then again, uh, we have here just the time, the skill, the passion, the pushing forward with teams and dedication. Now, there's some interesting technologies that have kind of really come together to build this industry. And one is the advanced video games and hardware, right? Those player versus player modes that let players compete against one another instead of competing against just a computer. Um, the online ranking systems and the player interactions 
are really key. And then we have uh, live streaming. We talked a little bit about this. Live streaming has really changed the game. It's one of the most important factors that have helped unleash the full potential of online video gaming as a spectator sport. Live streaming has made it possible for millions of gaming enthusiasts to arrange themselves into tribes behind their favorite players and games. This is, includes YouTube Gaming, Twitch, and Mixer which are dedicated platforms where gamers can show off their gameplay skills, build credibility and followings. And then uh, internet. You know, internet speeds are incredibly important. It's one of the most important parts of the online gaming ecosystem. Now, until the last decade, most internet speeds just simply weren't fast enough to permit gaming at a grand scale. Gaming consumes a lot of bandwidth. And with poor connections, there's too much lag to play competitively. Poor internet affects player performance and spectators' ability to watch. And esports competitions are decided in milliseconds. And even networks with too much latency interfere with players' ability to respond with the game environment competitively. So that has helped a lot. And then these multiplayer games have allowed players to interact within the same game environment in the way that used to be impossible. Individual players compete against others to hone in their skills who rank at the top of their class. Players can build teams, share objectives, and even, even supervise one another's play, which has kind of really allowed for a social system to build upon rivalries, status, partnerships, and shared goals, even virtual social systems that spill over into the real world that create loyalties among fans and allow the best players to build tribes of followers. So that's kind of the intersection of technologies and uh, spectators, competitions, and tournaments, of course. Now let's talk a little bit about the types of esports out there that have really kind of given uh, you know rise to esports. And uh, I would say player versus player is one of the biggest ones here. Uh, we have first-person shooters like Fortnite, real-time strategy games, and multiplayer games. Uh, multiplayer online battle game. So let's take a look at some examples. So player versus player, Super Smash Brothers is a great example, really popular. And then Mortal Kombat, you're seeing an old school Mortal Kombat video game over here. Um, it, 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 they're really fun. It, they, they, people square off against each other um, and they fight, you know? Um, it's the oldest form of video games, really. And uh, it's called PvP for short. And it's the earliest esports tournaments were mostly based off fighter games just like this. All right, next. Next we have first-person shooters. And here's a couple examples here. First-person shooters. Each player views the game through the eyes of the character they are controlling. While gamers can generally choose to view their character in third person, the first person view is required for instantaneous reaction times. A couple examples, Call of Duty, Overwatch, Counter-Strike, and then of course Fortnite, which is a Battle Royale style first person shooter game that we talked a little bit about. It's explained more in the online or on the book. Now, real-time strategy games, a couple examples here are like Civilization and XCOM and Hearthstone. These are the, the chess of esports, right? They're team-based, and they involve deep levels of strategy to win. Rival teams compete to control resources that they could use to defeat their opponents. Now, the emphasis here is on managing you know, resources to defeat your rivals. Now, online multiplayer player battle arena games, okay? These are some of the most popular in esports today. Um, small groups of teams can compete against each other to win. These teams use headsets to communicate in real time during gameplay. And some of the biggest esports tournaments that we'll talk about in our next videos are based on this. Defense of the Ancients 2, League of Legends are just two examples. Now, sports simulation games, I think, are going to be really big for a lot of reasons, and we'll talk about that later on in the book and the course. But the, one of the great things about sports simulation games is that they're based on sports that have been around forever, and they're not going anywhere. You know, one of the problems with esports teams and competitions and leagues is that, you know, Fortnite's popular today. It might not be popular next year. And if you're building up skills for that specific game, it could go away. But sports are going to stay, these sports like baseball, football, basketball, they're not going anywhere. And building up sports uh, skills in this game for esports is really important. FIFA, as I mentioned, um, you know, for, for uh, international uh, soccer has their E World Cup now. NBA 2K, Madden NFL um, are all getting on board. 
So that's it. In the next video, we're going to talk about the top esports tournaments. We're also going to talk about the study of video games from an academic perspective. So follow along with this course. We have a lot of great learning in education in esports. Can't wait to get on to the next video with you guys. Thanks for watching. Let me know what you think, and let's learn about this together.